Hello everyone, welcome to my video tutorial for the trans skin in Voyant. My name is Fabricio Lacarra Ramirez, and I'm a Digital Humanities Assistant for the DH Center here at San Diego State University. This guide is part of a series of mini tutorials covering various tools and functions available in Voyant for text analysis. If this is your first time hearing of or using Voyant, I invite you to explore our slideshow guides on Voyant basics and Voyant stop words and search queries created by Kiana Kinshasa. Our DH workshop tutorial for Voyant for text analysis, created by Pam Lack, is a great supplementary resource to view afterwards. This mini tutorial will cover the trend skin within Voyant, how to read the different trends graphs, how to edit displayed information, and how it can offer practical applications in analyzing a collection of texts. All right, let's get started. Trends is a visualization tool that displays the frequencies of terms across documents in the corpus. Term frequency is displayed on customizable graphs with various options for your choice of presentation. Each term has a different color corresponding to it, and this color is used to represent the points on the graph and the lines connecting them. So, what does it look like? There are five different graph types available to use in trends. Here they are. The line graph. This one's useful for depicting summary statistics. This graph is consistent and numeric. The stacked bar graph. This is an extended bar chart that divides each bar's numerical value into subgroups. The line and stacked bar graph is a combination of the line and stacked graphs. This shows the variation in values while also representing points on the graph as subgroups. The area graph is used to represent accumulated totals using numbers over time. The columns graph is similar to the grouped bar chart. It's used for computing statistical summary measures across levels of multiple categorical variables. As with other tools, you can add terms into the visualization through the term search box at the bottom left of the trend skin panel. Clicking the reset button at any time returns your trends graph to how it was when you first opened the corpus in Voyant. The display drop-down box has a few functions available. Checking the box that says show labels will include labels above each point in the graph with the term they represent. Note, showing labels can help with the interpretation of data but can also clutter the graph. You may need to weigh the benefits and limitations of using labels in your visualization. As a feature you can toggle on or off, you can decide to change this aspect of your graph at any time. Note, labels are currently unavailable for the area graph display. Stemming, stop word, and palette editing functions are all available in Trends. If you'd like to learn more about configurations, please check out our other Voyant tutorials. A legend at the top of the graph displays selected terms and their corresponding colors. Clicking any terms in the legend will toggle their visibility on or off. This can be used to facilitate data analysis by temporarily decluttering the graph. Hovering your cursor over any point on the graph causes a pop-up box to appear with information about the entry. This pop-up box's information includes the term, term frequency, which we'll cover next, and whether it's relative or raw, the document it appears in, and the segment of the corpus or document it's a part of. Let's spend some time talking about term frequency. The y-axis of the trends graph shows the frequency of terms in a corpus. There are two options to choose from, relative or raw frequencies. Let's start by analyzing relative frequencies. Relative frequencies display term frequency in document or document segments. This setting shows numerical value in decimals. It represents the frequency of a term weighed across all terms in the document or document segment. This is the default setting when opening the trends graph and can be changed in the options menu. 
Relative frequencies are a percentage of all terms in the document or document segment. For example, the relative frequency of Mr. in Pride and Prejudice is 0.0064237, which represents approximately 0.64% of the entire document. Now, let's look at raw frequencies. Raw frequencies display the absolute count for each document or document segment. This setting shows numerical value in whole numbers. Each number represents every single instance where the term is used. For example, the count for Mr. in Pride and Prejudice is 785, meaning that the term Mr. appears exactly 785 times in that document of the corpus. Determining whether to use relative or raw frequency will depend on your research questions. If you're trying to determine what percentage of a document a specific word occupies, relative frequency is helpful. Relative frequency might be impacted by document length or the number of unique terms in a document. If you're trying to determine where a particular word is most common in the corpus, raw frequency, or word count, is likely all you would need to focus your analysis. Both relative and raw frequencies are valuable to use and may complement each other when comparing data. In this case, Mr. has a high frequency in Pride and Prejudice. When you switch from raw to relative, the top of the bar moves up. This is caused by a change in the y-axis scale. Mr. represents a high percentage of the document, whether due to vocabulary density, document length, or some other factor. This change points to an area for further investigation of the importance of Mr. in this particular document. In short, switching the scale from raw to relative can be useful in guiding your research. The x-axis of the trends graph shows the entire corpus segmented by document. When the corpus contains multiple documents, the trend skin shows the frequency of terms in each document. When the corpus contains a single document, the trend skin shows the frequency of terms for each equally divided segment or chunk of a document. Here are the two corpora graphs compared side by side. Note, when building a corpus with a single document, segments are created automatically. All segments are, approximately, the same length. See the options for changing the number of segments in use. Note, you cannot remove specific documents from the corpus through the Trends tool. Trends will include the entire corpus when visualizing graphs. If you want to change the documents that appear in your graph, you'll have to build a new corpus on the voyanttools.org webpage before visualizing in Trends. Let's spend some time discussing the drill down function. When your trends graph is in corpus mode, you can use this function to drill down to the document level for a more detailed view of your data. Double clicking any point on the graph will bring up two options, terms and document. Terms shows a single selected term for all documents. If you double click to point on the graph representing the term Mr., the graph would display the term frequency for Mr. across each document in the corpus, divided into segments. Each line in the graph, along with its corresponding color and number, represent a different document found in the corpus. For example, the orange line represents document number 6 in our corpus, Emma, 1815. Hovering your cursor over any point on the graph here, will show you that point's respective document. Document shows all selected terms for a single document. If you double-clicked a point on the graph corresponding to Jane Austen's love and friendship, the graph would display the term frequency for all selected terms across different segments of that specific document. When using the drill-down function in either mode, you can customize the number of segments the graph is divided into. The slider determines the segments, and the amount of segments can range from 2 to 100. If you'd like to learn more about available skins, I invite you to explore our other mini-tutorials in this series on Voyant for Text Analysis. Thank you for watching, and have a lovely day.